Hello guys, welcome to Everything Metallurgy and welcome to day 28 of 100 days 100 concepts and today in this video we will discuss about Ellingham diagrams briefly. Okay, so in short we will look at what Ellingham diagram will represent and what can we infer something about uh, the stability of any phases, right? So what is this phase diagram? I mean, sorry, Ellingham diagram. So what is this Ellingham diagram? So Ellingham diagram is, you know, a graph which is plot between delta G and the temperature. What is delta G? Delta G is my free energy change. Correct? So, the y-axis will be my delta G and x-axis will be temperature. Now, one should immediately think of how this Ellingham diagram will look like. Okay, how the curve will look like. So, if you remember an equation for delta G, you must remember this delta G minus T into delta S. Correct? So, this is the equation which relates the Gibbs free energy change of any reaction or any transformation and the enthalpy of that particular reaction temperature at which that particular reaction is taking place and finally the entropy change okay so i'll just write down that what is delta h the enthalpy change which is associated with it t is the temperature and delta s is my entropy change correct so if you just look at this equation carefully and just see what is the graph that we get for Ellingham diagram. So here if you just compare this with y is equal to mx plus c okay so which is a straight line right. So here m is nothing but my minus delta s. What is m? m is minus delta s correct because we are plotting what y is delta g and x over here is temperature. Okay, and the intercept C will be my enthalpy. So let's say uh, I have something like this. Okay, and what is this thing? This is the intercept which I got when T is equal to zero. So this will be equal to my delta H. Okay, so that is how you basically see. Right, so what is uh, the slope here? Slope M will be equal to minus delta s so this is how your ellingham diagram may look like but is it the case for all the elements no this particular graph which i just drew is only for my co formation okay i'll just write co formation every metal oxidation okay will have a positive slope something like this okay so this is what you have to remember Right, so in delta G versus T, right, usually the reactions which we see are oxidation reactions. Why oxidations? Because we want to choose, we want to choose some particular, you know, reducing agents in order to extract the metals. Okay, so let's say, uh, I'll just draw over here. Okay, so let's say I have some A plus O gives rise to AO and I also have some B plus BO gives rise to BO. Something like that. Let A and B are two different metals. Now, as you see, which is the most stable phase over the range of the temperature? That is what you must know. Right. So, we all know that delta G will explain you about the stability of the phase whether that particular phase or that particular you know constituent is stable or not okay so we all know when delta g is negative any reaction will be feasible right but you must also think when you have two different values let's say um, at this particular temperature let me take one temperature something like this at this particular temperature we have two different values, right? This is for my GA. Okay, let me write delta GA. This is my delta GB, correct? So, let's say both are negative. How you will choose? 
then you must obviously choose the lower element to be stable that means in this particular range which will be stable my b plus o gives rise to bo will be taking place that means as delta gb is less than delta ga okay so what is the you know reaction that is more feasible at this particular temperature let's say t1 at t1 i have delta gb less than delta ga so obviously this particular reaction which is b plus o gives rise to bo will be taking place so you must remember here that at this particular temperature t1 irrespective of the presence of a and b both these elements my b is something which is trying to get oxidized so this b can be used to reduce my ao because this b can take this oxygen from my ao right so you must remember an important point over here that in any you know in any temperature sorry at any temperature you must choose the reducing agent such that it must lie below the line of your particular element which you want to reduce or oxide which you want to reduce that means in vice versa okay so in the reverse fashion if you see if you have two different lines in an ellingham diagram the bottom line element can always reduce the top line oxide okay that's what an important point that you have to notice right similarly let's consider one more temperature somewhere here t2 what happens over here which is more stable now the things got reversed so here this particular reaction a plus o gives rise to ao will be more feasible than the other one so you can see that at this particular temperature something over here okay you have both delta g is equilibrium let's name it t equilibrium because both are equal both have equal delta g right so if t is greater than t equilibrium then you can say that a can reduce my other oxide which is bo whereas if t is less than my t equilibrium what we just discussed then b can reduce my ao this is what you have to remember now one more interesting fact is co because just now as i said this is how my line look like and as i said for metals everything will be positive right so that is the reason why carbon is the most common reducing agent especially when we are talking about higher temperatures why because as we go on increase the temperature for c the gibbs free energy is always decreasing as we increase the temperature so that is the reason why carbothermic reduction the most famous reaction which is taking place in iron making blast furnace okay is an example uh, because carbon can be used as a reducing agent to many elements not only iron but carbon is one of the most common reducing agent because of this fact right so you also have one more reaction Uh, where you see you have okay let me take another color right you have a horizontal line which is formation of my co2 why it is forming a straight line why it is having a negative slope and all this full details are discussed in our course so if you are interested please do check out everythingmetallurgy.com and you know get complete exposure to whatever you can for gate metallurgy so with this i want to stop over here so today's video i think i made some important points of ellingham diagram clear to you how to reduce how to pick a reducing agent and also how you can know about the stability of different elements using ellingham diagrams so i think uh, this video was again requested by you in the comment section so i request you to comment down below whichever topics you want to i mean we want to make in the coming future so thanks for the 
good support that you are showing on us so keep supporting we'll bring in more and more content which helps all the gate metallurgy aspirants also do check out everything metallurgy.com to get complete guidance from us and also go and check out the most affordable test series for gate metallurgy thank you guys i'm going to stop here meet you tomorrow with one more interesting concept thank you